Welcome to Tune In Radio U podcast. I am your host, Ruth, and I am here with Lou Martin from the Awakened Spirits Network. He has been channeling for over 30 years in groups and one-on-one, and he has most graciously accepted my invite to be interviewed uh, for my podcast. So welcome, Lou. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you so much for, uh, for agreeing. To pleasure. Be it's great to have pleasure, you. Here. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, you know, I mean, all of us are new. You, we were just chatting before we got started and saying this is kind of, you know, you're 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 a little new to some of these things. And uh, I live for these moments, honest to God. You know, because um, you know it, it's always new to somebody uh, at some point, and there's so much to learn about all this. Yeah. And we're all teach, teaching each other. So. Yeah. I'm just grateful for the chance to talk about these things. Yes. And I am grateful to be able to learn from really cool people like yourself. So, well, thanks. I'll do my best. <laughs> no pressure. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to start off with the big one. What right. is, uh, what is channeling exactly? Um, Great. And, can, and can anyone do it? Is it, is it something that yes. anyone can pick up? And Yes. Yes. It, yeah. it, it, channel, channeling is a skill. Anyone can learn to do it. We're all channeling uh, different parts of ourselves all the time. Everyone really is a channel basically, but to call yourself a channel is to either consciously um, or in trance uh, bring through a spirit guide, your higher self, uh, messages from loved ones is, is often called mediumship. So there's a bit of a separation between the two of those. But yeah, spirit, you know, we're spiritual beings having a human experience. And I started to learn about this 33 years ago this summer. And um, that, uh, you know, I had experiences that, that, that blew my mind. Uh, and um, it, uh, it showed me that uh, this, I'm living in a time of awakening. And I get to play some part in this uh, cosmic story, which is a huge uh, honor and challenge and responsibility all, all together. And, uh, but there, uh, there's just so much love and support and, and guidance available to us. So uh, channeling is a skill anyone can learn to, to practice. Basically, you meditate, uh, you, you learn how to trust your imagination a, a little more consciously, and then you just be- begin to bring through writing or or messages from spirits and um, you just practice that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So um, what, what were these uh, mind blowing experiences that you speak of that happened well, to you? S- sure. So, I mean, my beginning was um, uh, the summer before I turned 30 uh, was this cosmic event in, in the world uh, and in the universe called the harmonic convergence which uh, I was working in a spiritual bookstore in, in uh, Santa Monica, in Los Angeles at, at the time and doing, uh, reading a lot of things after a decade of really, you know, um, going from one thing to, uh, to another and not really feeling very directed. And um, so I started meditating at that time. And uh, uh, the, the harmonic convergence was a, a, a time of cosmic spiritual awakening. And I had that awakening myself right around that time. A friend uh, told me uh, there's this thing called Kundalini energy and it resides at the base of your spine. The Hindus talk about it in all their teachings. And um, he gave me a piece of quartz crystal and said, if you meditate with this, uh, you might open your Kundalini energy. And the very first time I did that, that's, that's what happened. I had this heat in the base of my spine uh, and I was guided to open my heart, open my heart, love, 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 love. And this energy uh, shot up my spine and out the top of my head. And uh, I was in like an altered state, powerfully and deeply for a few hours, and then more lightly for about a week. And um, I think that was uh, before the harmonic convergence happened. And actually during these three days, August 16, 17, 18, in in, uh, 1987, I got invited to experience my first uh, spirit guide channeled through somebody else. And that is my uh, teacher, uh, Lazarus, L-A-Z-A-R-I-S, not Lazarus, but Lazarus, and um, through this wonderful uh, channel named Jack Purcell. And so that was the beginning of um, these last 33 years of studying with different spirit guides. 
Wow. That's incredible. Yeah. What is it? Um, it's, what does it feel like to, to, you know, bring, bring through those messages? Like what is, what does it feel like to be a channel? Like, does it feel any different? Um, yeah. Yeah. It, you were describing it a minute ago when you said you were looking at some of my material and how your heart was opening and your energy was raising. And, and that's, that's basically it. Um, honestly, we're, we're both going to be high as kites just talking about this stuff. Uh, you know, because, um, one of the quotes from my guides is they say your heart knows what your mind struggles to believe and understand. And the whole shift that's happening in the world right now can be described in so many ways, but, uh, it's the return of the divine feminine. It's, it's, uh, opening the heart. Uh, it's coming back into a conscious awareness with the earth, with spirit, with other um, consciousness, beings of light, angels, ETs, etc., and realizing that we are surrounded by consciousness uh, and that we've really come through uh, thousands of years of kind of a quarantine, you know, what, what spirit calls the fall from grace or, or the fall from, uh, you know, consciousness. So we've come through this really dark uh, and painful time where we forgot who we are and now we're beginning to remember and that remembering uh, comes through love, of course. And that's why it feels so good to channel spirit, because spirit, uh, you know, uh, is love, is uh, wisdom, is peace, is uh, unlimited, unconditional, infinite, absolute, all of those wonderful things. So, you know, they work with us and through us in alignment with our free will and our beliefs to help us uh, remember who we are and to help us to, to live more consciously. Mm. Beautiful. I Thank love you. that. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Well, you look like you're having a great time. So when I've been checking out your work on Facebook and, and watching your live videos and um, I read, I was reading through your eBooks that you sent me as well. And it's just right. like, delightful you know it's it's beautiful stuff like your your writing is beautiful Thank um you, you say that it's it's all channeled yeah yeah all that all that yeah. stuff yeah, um yeah. it it was literally lighting me up it was um it was so beautiful and just when when your presence and when you speak uh is is just kind of puts you in this really it, how can I describe it? Like, it's almost like a, a peaceful grace, you know, loving all that good stuff, you know, like it's, it, that's what, Groovy. what, what comes out and it's, it's really beautiful to feel and hear and watch. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you, honey. Well, see Ruth, you're, you are receptive to these energies, of course. Mm. Mm. You know, I, I mean, it really, it's, it's a two way street, my friend. So sure. there's the give the giver and the receiver. And you see, this is, this is what's this decade is so much about, uh, you know, really a kind of a polarization in the world uh, between uh, people who are still very attached to the mind and our belief system of separation and all of that uh, struggle, struggle, struggle uh, versus the rest of us who are like, help, 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 please. There must be an easier way, a more fun way, a more joyous way. And, and the angels are doing their little wands going, yes, come, come this way, children, you know, wake up, wake up. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm, I'm so glad they're doing that because you know, yeah. the yeah. other way uh, is just, I mean, it's not sustainable and we can That's see, right. see the, uh, the product of the fact that it's not sustainable right now. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you think doing this work for all this time has changed you? Has it changed you? Sure, sure. Uh, great question. Very, very great question. I mean, I think the thing is, uh, well, you know, my guides are very funny. Um, and uh, so they say uh, the choice is very simple. It's, it's uh, inspiration or desperation. It's humility or humiliation, you know, and uh, I, I channel these messages because these are my own life lessons. You know, these are my own fears and doubts and worries and struggles and, and blah, blah, blah. 
And, you know, then uh, I, I do, how it's changed me, I think, in, in simple terms is I, I have more conscious people in my life at this point than ever before. And that I give myself to this work over and over every day, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, and look for opportunities to learn more and to share more. Um, that, uh, that keeps me getting out of my own way, which is a, a, a great, a great gift. Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm still the same person I think I was, you know, all along at the core of my being, but I think that the gift of working with the unconditional love and perfect peace of spirit and spirit guides and God, got us all that is, et cetera. Uh, you know, you learn to give up the fight a lot quicker and, uh, to, to see what's happening as, uh, as humbly and as honestly as possible, uh, a lot more, uh, a lot sooner as well. So those things are helpful, but it's usually two steps up and one step back for everyone, uh, you know, sure uh, in is. this world, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you just, you look for progress, not perfection and make your peace with, uh, with what shows up as well. Mm -hmm. You know? Perfect. Um, so there are, would you say that there are a lot of um coming back to channeling work yeah um there's like in any kind of uh, well in many professions there are people that are the real deal and then there yeah. are people that are not so much maybe sure you know like sh charlatans of sorts you know like sure um how can you, how can someone, you know, like if, if you're new to this game and you're trying to find some guidance and all that sort of stuff. And so you, you're, you're looking down these paths and there's like a myriad of places right, right, you could go. Right, right. Um, how can you, how do you tell, like, how do you tell what, who the real deal is and who isn't? Um, sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you know, follow your heart. Uh, your heart will never lie to you. You know, it's the ego and the mind that talks us out of the truth. Uh, you know, my guides say, you know, the truth, the moment you feel it, but then we tend to give our power away by talking ourselves out of the truth, you know, uh, by rationalizing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Rationalizing, justifying, uh, judging ourselves off. And we think, Oh, I shouldn't think that. Oh, I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't see that or say that or, you know, uh, pay attention to that. And, um, I'm, you know, the joke is denial is not just a river in Egypt. Uh, it, is, it is often how a lot of us get through life every single day. Um, so, you know, why, why the channeling is so um, healing and nurturing and like you can feel it in the words, uh, you know, and you can, you can hear it and feel it in the energy of anyone that's, that's really on this path is because um, it has to come through us in order to come to us. You know, you, to come back to how do you channel, how do you learn to channel, how do you open to channel? Uh, there's a wonderful book by Sanaya Roman, S-A-N-A-Y-R-O-M-A-N, uh, who does uh, Orin, and she has a website, orin.ben.com, uh, that I recommend to a lot of people. Um, you know, basically, it, it is this process of learning to listen to, trust, and follow our inner guidance. That's the quote from, from my guides. And we do that by going into peace as often and as deeply as possible. And so, uh, you know, all, all spiritual practice is basically, uh, all spiritual practices have in common meditation, excuse me, uh, prayer or affirmations, uh, affirmative prayer, uh, study, you know, and then being of loving service, uh, looking for opportunities to inspire and to help others and to, to give to others and all of that. So if you do all those things in your daily life, that begins to become the template for uh, trusting more, greater peace, greater clarity, uh, greater discernment, uh, these kinds of, you know, it's kind of a spiritual hygiene. Uh, you know, uh, we all, I'm a student of the Course in Miracles. And, uh, you know, in there, uh, the Course says, because you have free will doesn't mean you can set the agenda. And uh, I love that uh, because it's like all of us, why we're in a course uh, in miracles in life is because until we recognize our spiritual nature and begin to, to honor it and trust it, 
we, we can't go back home to where we, we came from. We, we continue to repeat this class of, of judgment and fear and blame and guilt and shame and all of those lovely things, uh, you know, where we're hanging out in denial and trying to think our way to the solutions. What crisis gives us, what this whole time of the lockdown and, you know, COVID and, and all of these, uh, the, the economy and all this, what this is giving everyone is what um, another of my teachers calls the cosmic reboot, Patricia Coderobles. Uh, you know, we've been, we get thrown back into ourselves in crisis and then crisis says, what do you believe now? Who do you trust now? What is your answer here? And when the mind can't, you know, the mind's like a computer, it'll think anything for any reason, which is wonderful. But when the mind can't come up with an answer, then we eventually surrender back into our hearts and eventually, you know, in, in sleep or exhaustion or meditation or whatever, being in nature, we come back into peace. And as I say, if we can sustain that energy of peace, then spirit, which is in a state of peace and love, can most easily connect with us. You know, law of attraction, like attracts like. So crisis is demanding resolution in our lives. And it, when we don't see the resources to resolve the problem in the outer, it forces us basically to go deeper into our inner journey. And that's where spirit waits to to help us, you see. That makes so much sense. Um, probably why so many people are kind of waking up at the moment, yeah? Because they've, they've been in lockdown, they've had to kind of sit there and and for many, potentially be bored out of their brains and then when they get past the boredom, they're like, oh, okay. It's now what? Just me and yeah, now what? And Yeah. Okay, and then they have to go in, I guess, because they can't go out. (laughs) Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah, uh, the answers are within. This is a cliche and it's true. But in order to to listen to, trust and follow those inner answers, we need to come to a place of, of discernment and detachment. And that's another way to describe what peace is. My guides say peace is the presence of infinite possibilities. And so, you know, you, you see when people have a meditation practice uh, or have a, you know, you walk on the beach every day or however you, you know, you garden, whatever you do to calm your mind, to quiet your mind and open your hearts and awaken your spirit is the way my guides put it. Whatever you do to feed your spirit, simply put, is going to bring you into a state of peace and into a state of flow. And when you start to realize that like a, um, a, uh, an artist, uh, a creative person, you know, I, I've done all those things. When you realize the answers are not in my conscious mind, but in my unconscious or subconscious, then, you know, I become deeply receptive to those energies and more discerning and detached from, you know, just the, the, the limitations that are outside of me. So, but it's, it, it, the, the key word here about healing is trust, which is, you know, we can know the truth, and we can feel the truth and we can be shown the truth. And often we're, we're shown the same truth over and over again until we, we get the message, get the lesson. Um, but until we trust that message, we don't allow it to uh, open the door to real change. And that's what the whole world is really working on right now. The whole, we're in a planetary healing crisis is the phrase from my guides. And this is to give us this permission to really look within, like we're saying, but more even than look to really begin to find like, oh, I never looked at it that way or I never thought about it like that or I, I uh, you know, uh, I, I never saw myself like this. Um, mm-hmm. Once we begin to like uh, drop the uh, um, attachments, you know, uh, which is another form of resistance, then, uh, then things are possible, you know, yeah. and um, it's in the realm of the possible that miracles happen. Yes. Very true. Um, so when I was reading uh, your eBooks, uh, just beautiful, beautiful words and meditations and poems and prayers. Thank you. And, um, such you just a... spoiled me rotten today, Ruth. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um, Thank you. I was, um, is it always, messages of hope and peace yeah. and love yeah. um yeah. is yes. there any 
Is there any bad ever, news? Yeah. Do you ever get <laughs> any like dark or ominous messages or, you know, like this is going to happen if you don't do this or, you know, anything no. like that? No, no, honey. No, no, no. Bless you. I mean, this is, you're, you're, you're doing a fine job, my friend. I, I, my heart goes out to you. Uh, this is the challenge for all of us is, is there a God who loves me, who understands me and cares about my happiness or not? You know, and that, that is the choice. And then the low road is, is there isn't. The high road is there is, you know, and this is the, the decade where everyone on the planet is really going to be uh, invited, challenged, and required uh, to, to make that choice, to make that choice more and more consciously. And um, there isn't a God who judges us or punishes us or hates us or blames us or is angry with us. That is our, our, our um, that's the nightmare we've managed to create in our, in our fear and confusion through the misuse of our free will uh, over thousands of years uh, when we forgot that um, uh, creating anything outside of love would uh, separate us from the creator of all things, and we'd begin to live in an illusion rather than live in the truth. So mm -hmm. I say again, that's what the fall from grace is, that the Bible talks about and other, many other cultures, the Great Flood and the fall of Atlantis and uh, Lemuria and uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, Nibiru, all these different uh, stories of, you know, catastrophe, uh, you know, we, we are, we're eternal beings is the good news. We've, we've lived forever. We will live forever. The only question is, are we ready to accept that in a human body in this uh, physical world right now and wake up from the nightmare and, and begin to, to live our dreams? Or do we continue to be afraid of our own truth, our own inner guidance, our own uh, self-worth? Um, uh, are we unwilling to love and forgive ourselves and each other and stay stuck in, in the, in the crazy, crazy world, you know, and, and one is, is becoming more, more and more painful, as you said, and the other is, uh, you know, you can't help but get a whiff of it and not feel better immediately because it is, it is the love song from the creator leading us home. Our, 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 you know, this is where we came from. This is where we're going. Mm. When you talk about God, what do you mean by that? Unconditional love and perfect peace and uh, the, the will of creation itself. So you're not, you know, when, because I know you said you came from a, um, a religious um, background, uh, as, did, as did I. Yes. And, yes. you know, the, the thought of God was, you know, a, a guy sitting on a chair you know, a big throne up in the heavens, looking down on you and judging and not judging and giving and not giving and whatever. Um, yeah. Is that, is that anywhere near what you're talking about or not at all? Not at all. Thank not God at for all. that. Exactly. I'm here to spread the good news. Hmm. Uh, do, do you know uh, Neil Donald Walsh who wrote the books, The Conversations with God? Uh, yes. He, Okay, good, good. He's brilliant. Um, he says, uh, he says if, if God has one message to humanity, it's you've got me all wrong. Hmm. That's, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and I mean, the other part of it is, of course, uh, you know, um, that's that whole uh, Western religion is uh, just divorced of the power of women and the, the role of, you know, uh, love and sexuality and uh, the, the equal, co-equal role of women on, on the planet, all that was completely uh, misused and abused, uh, uh, you know, and millions of people had to die for all of that in one lifetime or another, sadly. But you see now the women are finding their voices and uh, opening their hearts and, and trusting their, their equality and their inner uh, guidance and their self-worth and self-love and the children too, and uh, the minorities uh, as well. So, I mean, it's over for the white man on this planet. You know, we've fucked it up We're really good. And, and now we got to just get out of the way and, and uh, you know, make our apologies and cooperate as, as fully as we can. Uh, to, to, to help this world come back into uh, the right order of things. So there is, there is a divine mother. And my, my teachers say she created the divine father 
and then together they created all life everywhere. And all they create is love and light. So everything that is not love and light is ultimately a temporary experience of separation and not real. So this is what The Course in Miracles talks about, that all of our pain and fear is our own madness. And the moment we will forgive ourselves for this and ask for help, we can begin to wake up again. Mm. Awesome. We, 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 we do it all. And, uh, uh, you know, the, the big thing also is, uh, is this whole, of course, victim consciousness that, that uh, the whole world is trying to uh, wake up from. Uh, you know, I love the quote from Alice Walker, was I saying this last time, how, how you know, the most common way people uh, give their power away is by thinking they don't have any, mm. you know, so and uh, mm, so we're really being asked to take our, uh, our authority, our uh, authenticity, our sovereignty back into our hearts, back into our lives. Um, it's really interesting that you uh, brought that up because uh, as I was reading uh, your ebook, uh, the invitation. Yeah. Um, you you talk about um, people acting as victims or being victims, and sure. Um, anyone who's listening or watching to this, you're watching this right now, uh, and and are finding themselves in that place. What would you say to them um, that they can do to change? Brilliant. Them? That's a brilliant question, honey. Well, the first thing is to take responsibility for our part in inviting or allowing what we're experiencing, because this is what my teachers teach me, that the law of attraction is the law of the land and free will is the law of the land that we, that we exist in. So when we um, feel victimized, it's because we're resisting. Some resisting taking responsibility resisting forgiving ourselves, resisting compassion or acceptance. Uh, those, are the, those are the big ones. And, and that also is, is said in the invitation. Um, first, I need to accept that I have invited or allowed this. Then I need to have compassion that this was the best I could do in this moment. And that's why it's shown up in my experience. Uh, and then I need to forgive myself that I can do better, that I can learn from this, that I'm a human being, that I will make mistakes that I have help, that I can ask for help, that I can ask my guides and almighty God to guide me and to help me to make this meaningful and purposeful. And the, the, the big one is we give it to God for God's purpose. We say, I don't understand this. You see everything. You show me my way through this. I will listen to your guidance in my life. And just be very patient and very still and very attentive and don't push past what you've called forth from the universe, let it, give it time and clarity to show up for you. And how you know it's shown up is you get the inspiration. You might be in the shower, you might be shopping, you might be doing the dishes, suddenly, boom. Oh my God, I could call this person. I never thought about that. Well, that, that could solve this situation. There it is, that's the answer. Or, you know, whatever. Um, it, you know, Abraham, who I'm a big fan of as well, Esther Hicks, who channels Abraham, they say there's like 30 solutions to every problem. That's how, that's how much of an illusion of separation we're all living in. We've, we're, we're thrilled if we can find two or three possibilities, you know, out of our, out of our experience. So, you know, there's just a lot of help available. Yeah. But, but in, order to, in order to receive that help, uh, we need to ask. We need to know that we are worthy of receiving the help. We need to give thanks in advance. This or something better is now on its way to me. And then, you know, allow there to be a space for grace so that the universe has full permission to show up and guide us uh, for the next step of the journey. Mm. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I've got a... You are, you, are, you are a wonderful listener and uh, you are asking some brilliant questions, my friend. You're, <laughs> no, seriously, you're, you're a very deep person. You're very welcome. You've done a lot of work uh, on yourself because you're, you're coming from a really deep place in, in these questions. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. you saying. Um, sure. Yeah, I've, I've done a bit of work. Yeah. Yes, yes. There's, there's, there's been some things that have happened. So yes, have you've come from. a long way. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Here's to you. Well thank done. You for, thank you for recognizing. I appreciate that. Sure, honey. Sure. Cool. Pleasure. Pleasure. Um, okay. I've got a good one for you. All right. So, so Hit me with it. 
<laughs> we both we both came from you know that religious upbringing where you yes know, god was viewed in, in a certain light and then opposite to that that was the the devil and evil yeah. and yeah. you know evil spirits and demons and all that sort of stuff and yeah stephen kingland yeah 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 <laughs> um and you know at the same time this this stuff and and you may all I'm sure you're aware of this. There's, there's a lot of stuff happening at the moment that uh, can be aligned or that has been aligned um, with, you know, the darker sort of sure. side sure. of spirit land. Um, sure. Is, you know, is that the case? Are there, you know, are there people aligned with darkness like that and that, that are serving darkness and and the devil and whatever right right well this is this boy you, yeah you you really set me up with this one my friend thank you this is <laughs> this is the deep this is the deepest one this is the deepest fear that people have mm-hmm. um it it is there isn't a yes or no answer to this very deep and, and powerful question um in one of abraham's dialogues a, a woman i believe it was asked is there a santa or a Satan. And Abraham said, yes, and you have created both of them. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's, let's unpack that for a moment, boys and girls. Uh, You know, there is heaven and hell because you as a sovereign being in this place of forgetting and awakening are being asked to lose your connection in order to find your connection being asked to, you know, let there be darkness in order for there to be light, let there be hot for cold and uh, hungry for full and male for female and duality of life, right? Yes, yes, uh, it's uh, hopping the fence over and over again. Okay, so the, so the way my guides put it to me is everything you can imagine is possible somewhere. And because this is a world of free will, there are people here that are imagining things that you would not want to imagine and, and living in those realities that you would not personally want to live in. Um, so the challenge of all of that is, you know, to, to look at that and respond to that from a conscious place, a loving place. Uh, Patricia Cota Robles, I'm, I'm working with her book, The Bigger Picture right now on my morning prayers, which I do Monday through Thursday at nine here. And, um, you know, uh, she, she talks in her, one of her recent posts from Spirit was about, called Loving All Life Free. And we were actually talking about this in one of my groups last night in the Summer of Light group. And um, uh, she says, you know, yes, there are, these, there are these people that are lost and there are, they create their reality and their reality is, is quite dark. And at the same time, there are those of us that are inviting them to wake up and to come back into the light and to, you know, let go of this illusion of separation. So far, they haven't answered that call was, was her, was her response to this, was her statement about all of this. The, the, the challenge really for people like you and I, Ruth, who are waking up to these possibilities right now is to be aware of these contrasts, but not to be overwhelmed by them. You see, and the, the way my guides help me with that is they say, like in healing sessions with people, when I work with people as a counselor and a channel and one-to-one sessions and doing readings and all this, is I can only deal with someone else's pain uh, to the degree that I've dealt with my own. So if someone brings up a story that's too overwhelming for me, then I get traumatized by it and I'm no help to them to hold that space for grace any longer. I've, I've lost my center. It doesn't happen a lot. It, it does happen, you know, uh, because your life is life. But the, the, the truth of it is that we really are powerful spiritual beings. And we really are made from the love and light of all that is. And we really do have all the help, love, and guidance in the universe. Why it's called The Invitation, that, that first ebook, is because God's will for us is, is perfect, whole, and complete. It's never going to force itself on anyone because that would defy its own nature. So we have to ask God to help us. We have to ask spirit to into our hearts and into our lives. When we're in unbearable pain or tremendous fear or 
worried about our loved ones, you know, all these things that we're dealing with more collectively than ever before right now, um, you know, uh, it's, it's softening our resistance. And that's part of the gift of this, you know, is uh, it, it, without a vision, the people perish. And the joke from my guides is 2020 is the year of the visionary. Uh, you know, we, we have to get our vision back, our, our, our sight back, and see a future that works for us personally, and then by extension for our loved ones, clients and friends and students, etc., and our family, our community, the whole wide world, all of that. Our work is to clean our, our side of the glass first, is the, the way I put it. And then, then, you know, I can believe what I'm offering. I can feel the truth of what I'm sharing. I can trust it myself. My guides say trust is everything. Who you trust, how deeply you trust, why you trust, who breaks your trust, uh, when you don't trust yourself, but you trust somebody else, you give your trust away, etc. Because trust is our relationship to the truth. And the truth is the deepest part of ourself. So, you know, we're all being very deeply challenged to wake up and, and understand, you know, uh, life can be very much better than what we've allowed it to be, but we can't enter it as children, you know, uh, in na naivety. We have to be innocent. That part of it is true, but not naive. And frankly, a lot of the crisis that's happening in the world right now is because people are being very naive. They're giving their power away to people, places, things, and situations that are unworthy of their trust. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a lot there's a lot in that question, my friend. You see. Yes. Yes. There yeah. Are. Yeah. You're, well, yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I hope that was helpful. Yeah, yeah. it was definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Um, yeah. How how can people get in contact with you? You do one on one channeling reading. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You do yeah. group stuff. You do uh, live sessions on Facebook. Um, yeah with groups and one-on-one -on -one, I imagine as well. Yep. 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 Hundreds um, of them. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So cool. Uh, how, how do people get in contact with you? How, how do you, you know, how sure. can they get some whatever? Sure. Thank else? you, honey. Sh sure. Thank you. Well, my, uh, I'm all over Facebook. Uh, so Awaken Spirits Network is uh, my YouTube channel where I'm going to interview this lady and put this interview up there at some point as well. Uh, and uh, I've got a lot of other wonderful interviews there. And uh, Awakened Spirits Network is also uh, the Facebook group for teachers and teachings. So I think you asked to join that, and, and I, mm -hmm. I, I gladly put you in that group. And then I have my regular Facebook page where I do morning prayers and spirit talks uh, and, uh, and post my interviews, and et cetera. And so that's Lou Martin or Lightheart2012. And then my um, email is lightheart2018 at gmail.com. Beautiful. Thank you. So what, um, last, last question. All right. I'm enjoying this. You, I could chat with you all day. This is a joy. <laughs> good, good. Um, well, if something comes up, then it comes up, but otherwise, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. this is, this is what I got for you. What sure. is your best advice for people that are just starting to see the world differently now? That is brilliant. That is brilliant. Well, uh, it really is all about love, you know? Uh, I mean, it is stupid simple, you know? And we, we've made life and living life extraordinarily complicated and confusing. And um, so, uh, you know, uh, peace, love, joy, appreciation, gratitude, happiness, fun, anything that feels good is basically bringing us back into alignment with who we really are and with our higher self, soul, and spirit, excuse me, which is our future in this world. Because as the planet continues to raise in its vibration, all this darkness and deception and all this is coming to the surface so we can see it clearly and not be naive, but be wise and, and uh, uh, wake up to it all. Uh, and do what you love and love what you do. You know, mm -hmm. Find what you're inspired about, like you and I are doing here and now. You know, uh, the thing that you, your passion is your purpose, is the way my guides say it. So when you, when you care about someone, something, follow that up. Trust your heart, follow your heart. It will never steer you wrong. It's only the ego that lives in fear and doubt that keeps uh, 
keeps us, uh, yeah, getting in our own way, basically, is the simple truth. Sure. I, I'd, like to, I'd like to just channel very briefly before we finish, if that's oh, all right. Exciting. Yes, please. Yes, well, of course. Try and, try and stop me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> yeah, great stuff. Okay, so again, everyone who's here, thank you so much for being here. Go ahead, close your eyes, turn within, take a deep breath. Right, God bless you, dear friends. Here we go, one more time. Dear ones, imagine seven stars spiral down through time and space, touch the crown of your head, take a nice deep breath. Relax and release down the seven chakra centers, crown, third eye, throat, and heart, take another good breath. Relax and release down the will center, the sacral, the root, hips, legs, feet, down into Mother Earth. Take another deep breath, dear friends. So dear ones, you are a spiritual being having a human experience, living at a moment of profound and life-changing spiritual potential, dear friends. And potential is a beautiful word. Because, dear friends, potential says what is possible. It doesn't say it's inevitable. It doesn't say it's necessary. It says what is available to you, what is possible for you. God bless you. Dear friends, as you open your hearts to the vibration of love and light, you're calling back into your conscious awareness, your guides, guardians, teachers, and friends, higher self, soul, and spirit. And, dear ones, these are the ones who do it with you but not for you, dear ones, because you and your power, you and your free will, you and your divine inner guidance and knowing, you and your inspiration, you and your courage and clarity are well able, dear friends, to listen to, trust, and follow that loving inner guidance. Dear friends, the whole world is looking for answers to what is unfolding in your lives right now. You see the truth, dear friends, and you feel the truth, and you trust the truth, and you speak the truth, and you act on the truth, and the truth will set you free. That is the commitment you've made to your soul and spirit in this lifetime, in your divine timing, dear friends, in accordance to your own free will, at your own pace, and in your own way. Dear friends, you can see that those that are willing and able and ready to do that are raising themselves up from amongst, from above, from beyond the world and are beginning to be seen and felt and recognized as individuals who are worth listening to, who have something to offer, who see a bigger picture. Dear friends, your heart knows what your mind struggles to believe. When you take time and make space for peace, as often and as deeply as possible, we are there in your midst. When you feel that peace, when you can carry that peace with you into the daily experience of your life, we are there. And when you allow that peace to open the door to inspiration, to ideas, to possibility, then the fulfillment of your spiritual nature, of your divine nature, of your human possibilities will be realized. The word is fulfillment, dear friends. You're looking at potential, stretching with possibility in alignment to your own free will, with courage and clarity, supported by truth, and reaching for greater fulfillment. It's there for you, dear friends, beyond what the world would dare believe. It's there within you, beyond what you have been ready to accept. This is that lifetime, dear friends. This is that decade, and this is that day. We are here with you. We love you. All is well for you. Ask for, give thanks about, and believe that life is loving you just as you are. And so it is, dear friends. Peace and blessings. Namaste. Mm, so good. Thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, felt that. Thank you, honey. So good. There we go. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much for, for uh, agreeing to, to do this interview and, and spend your, your time answering my my questions i really appreciate pleasure. it lou pleasure um, pleasure ruth great to connect with you yeah whoever's listening um please don't don't be afraid to reach out to to lou he is a 
beautiful soul. He feels great. <laughs> you feel great, Lou. You really do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're all getting our wings. We're helping each other get our wings. Thank you, sweetheart. And thanks for what you're doing. And um, thanks to our buddy, Ian Morris. And um, yes. I'm also looking forward to, uh, to your interview with uh, Tennille, is it? To Neil Bentley, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel I'm in uh, very lofty company here, so I'm I'm extremely honored to be a part of your uh, part of your journey. Thank oh, you well, so much. Well deserved. Well deserved, my friend. All Thank good. You.